Hello everyone for Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz here at Pearson McGonagall Hall, the campus of Temple University. It's the Donald and Nancy Resnick Practice Center here at the beautiful campus of Temple University. We want to, of course, uh, thank St. Joe's University staff for allowing us, of course, to do their interview yesterday. We want to thank, of course, Phil Martelli and, of course, uh, St. Joe player DeAndre Beverly. I'd like to thank, of course, my friend and sports information director Marie Wozniak for allowing us that interview. Today, what more can you actually say about what we're about to do in the next couple of seconds? We are headed back here to the Temple University campus, and we'll be joined by a longtime friend, Fran Dunphy, who has certainly revolutionized this basketball program here on North Broad Street, and certainly a man who I've known outside the basketball universe on the personal side of the universe. And, of course, uh, Temple will open the season against who better than the number one team in the country, the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. We'll talk with Fran momentarily, and we'll talk about, of course, where he came from and how he got over here to Temple. We'll also talk about, of course, his history with the coaches versus cancer. He, of course, is among the co-chair people in the Philadelphia chapter. This is Jake Schwartz, Voice of Reason. We're going to go inside in a few moments and talk with my longtime friend, Temple head coach, Fran Dunphy. Hello everyone for Voice of Reason, this is Jake Schwartz from Pearson McGonagall Hall at the Temple University campus. We've never had this guy who of course is a personal friend that I've had the privilege of going up and down the basketball road with, but not just the basketball road, but the personal side of the road with Fran Dunphy. It is so good to see you as always. Welcome to the Voice of Reason. Happy to be here, Jake. I, I know, I know you are. to be on the Voice of Reason. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it really is such a thrill uh, to see you. Um, obviously, of course, uh, you know that you and I know each other extremely well. I remember, of course, when I was a kid, uh, I went to Cabrini College, and I went to this camp that was run by a good friend of yours, Joe Weber, who actually went to high school with my father at Haverford High. And every Wednesday, I remember I had the chance to listen, to hear you chat. And, and that was actually the first time I got the name Jake the Snake. You've been using that name for me no more than two decades now. You know that, right? <laughs> I got that call for me, Jake. You do. You, you do. I named you. You, you, you helped me get, go you helped yeah, me get going. <laughs> the voice of reason, though. I wish the voice of reason. <laughs> that's pretty good. Well, obviously, of course, uh, I know your history. I know where you came out of. You're a Philadelphia guy, just like myself. Uh, you want to rewind, tell everybody, of course, out here in the Internet world uh, where you started? Well, I went to high school at Malvern Prep. Uh, I went to LaSalle College back in the day. Spent 18 months in the United States Army, uh, came out and hung around for a couple of years and then got a chance to be a high school basketball coach at my alma mater, Malvern Prep. And then I got a chance to be at my other alma mater, LaSalle College then, and it was shortly thereafter going to be a university. And then I left uh, LaSalle University to go to American University. You worked with Gary Williams, I by the way, for and for uh, United States Army. You were with uh, Dan Doherty, who, of course, has had great tradition uh, here in Philadelphia, coaching some of the great uh, basketball players that have graced our presence from, obviously, Wayne Ellington and Gerald Henderson. But before then, your uh, student, uh, at, we'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, Jerome Allen. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can recap again. <laughs> That's so I okay. left American U to go back to LaSalle, and then I got a chance to be uh, an assistant coach at University of Pennsylvania. After one year, I got a chance to be the head coach. Well, hold that thought. Let me and just, uh, I got a, my stupid phone is, uh, <laughs> we got to start this stuff again. Oh, nope, it's not my phone. It's, it's probably my phone, Jake, so we'll... Yeah, I hear a noise. <laughs> All right. I don't know who's, uh, who's... Oh my goodness, that was Larry Dacker. Oh, he just, he just, uh, he just. Uh, thank, thank you. By the way, I just want to throw that out, Larry. Thank you again for this interview. I just want to, I owe this to you. If you are watching, whatever you're watching this, by the way, thank you for allowing me to talk to this man who has been more than just a great coach, as a man that I've had the privilege of 
again, going up and down the road. But let's recap again. You, of course, are a University of Pennsylvania coach. You spent 17 glorious seasons over there. You, you had some pretty good players. We sure did. We sure did. I was very lucky. And you mentioned Jerome Allen. I think he was the guy that kind of gave me credibility that I, that I could coach a little bit. And uh, I had some great assistant coaches who did a, a lot of work. And I learned a lot of, of basketball from those assistant coaches. Uh, and then I got a chance to come here in 2006 to Temple to succeed John Cheney, which is what they tell us not to do in our profession is to succeed a legend. But uh, it was a great opportunity for me, and uh, I've been very fortunate to coach now. This is my 27th year of head coaching in the city of Philadelphia, and I always feel like no one's more lucky than me. But John was a really big influence on somebody like you, especially when you were over at Penn. You had the chance, of course, uh, to face him. Uh, just about once a year when you were coaching, of course, over at Penn. What, what was a guy like John Chaney for someone like you? Yeah, I think for, for most of us who were a couple years younger than John, we learned from him, we respected him. Uh, we knew that the challenge was absolutely there when we faced his team, so you had to really figure out how to best get some shots, which was never easy, and how not to uh, give up too many points. Uh, but certainly it was very difficult to play them, and I, I think he had a phenomenal career. Obviously, he's had a great career because he's a Hall of Fame coach, and, but he's a Hall of Fame human being as well. This school itself, of course, is one of the most well-respected schools in the country, and you came off, of course, a great season last year, of course, uh, winning uh, American Coach of the Year, and we congratulate you, of course, on that. And uh, more importantly, of course, uh, it just seems like each year, um, you know, students get really excited, of course, around this time of the year because uh, your school, of course, uh, has produced some great players. You've produced great players yourself, and you've also produced great coaches, one of whom, by the way, I believe, is now the uh, head coach at Penn, and that's, of course, Steve Donahue. You've also had, of course, Fran O'Hanlon. He's now over at Lafayette. So you've been coaching probably between assistant and head coaching over 41 years. I guess what has been the best part about being a coach in the Philadelphia area and also of course being on the road when you were coaching with Gary Williams I believe at American University a Hall of Famer as well. Indeed I've been lucky enough to be around a lot of those kinds of people who taught me well and, uh, and you mentioned Steve Donahue and Fran O'Hanlon there was Gil Jackson was also a head coach at the Khalid wonderful level. coach by the way uh, Matt Langle so I've been lucky to learn from those guys who were uh, on our staff and they, again, taught me a lot about coaching, but really about uh, getting along with people and, and how to react to student athletes and all of those things that we all have to do and, and give back to the communities. And so we're, we're a lucky group. Uh, we've all had uh, some longevity, which has been great. So uh, hopefully Matt Lang will have a, a long, illustrious coaching career as well. So. And maybe some of our present guys will get a chance to be head coaches as well. So uh, we're all, we feel yeah. like we're a very lucky group. Sure. I, I was going to say that um, you know, yesterday I had the privilege of talking with your longtime friend, uh, Phil Martelli at St. Joe's, who of course is the national chairman of the Coaches versus Cancer Committee. You yourself are among the co-chair people in the uh, Coaches versus Cancer chapter here in Philadelphia. What is the best part? And I know this, that of course, you're every year around this time you grow out the stash <laughs> the uh if you want to get a good anybody want to try to get a look at the stash you do that for prostate cancer what does i asked phil this question i'll ask you this what does cancer mean to you well it certainly is something that has affected all of us uh, in our families our friends uh, so many people that we've known over the years have been affected by this horrible disease so it's actually our Coaches National Association of Basketball Coaches Charity of Choice. So we got involved in it in 1996, and I think we've developed a pretty good brand over these last 19 and change years. I think people have really jumped in there and supported us greatly, and uh, so we, we feel very, very fortunate to be a part of this great charity that's out there. And our attitudes are that we've done good work, but we have to do more because every day we're still having people that are affected by this disease. I do grow the mustache every November. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks really bad now. No, it looks good on you. I, th I really like it. It'll look worse in another couple <laughs> of weeks, so I'll be happy to, to uh, get rid of it. But I think the, it's a simple enough, small enough thing to do to tell everybody that uh, I'm thinking about those people that are affected by this disease. Now, I definitely mentioned uh, to Phil yesterday, and I remember Phil kind of saying something about how we really want to uh, 
not just get rid of, uh, I guess, uh, watch cancer go, but just to pre pretty much crush it, get it away for good. I referred it actually to as, uh, if I had to ask you this, would you be okay with cancer being like a hurricane, sort of just drifting out to sea instead of just staying on land, basically it just going away for good, just kind of crushing it? Because Phil did mention that. Yeah, well, that's, that's one of his big statements, and I, I listen to that all the time, and the, he's a good man. He's done very good work. He's really been dedicated to the cause, so I'm very proud of him for that. But I think really all of us just want to see the, what the American Cancer Society and all of those great people that work there have done, the researchers, have really put together some great opportunities for people to maybe not beat cancer altogether, but we're elongating life for many people at this point, and we're going to continue to do so. All right, well, we're here, of course, at uh, Pearson McGonagall Hall, the campus of uh, Temple University, talking again with a longtime friend, head coach Fran Dunphy, and of course, uh, you open the season this weekend, or should say this Friday, it's, it's just around the corner, against the number one team in the land, that's the UNC Tar Heels, and of course legendary head coach uh, Roy Williams. Uh, your thoughts, of course, on that, and I know this is going to be a great year. This is still a learning process for your team. You've lost Will Cummings. You've now inserted Josh Brown as your starting point guard. Uh, any thoughts going into the season? Well, I, I think we have a tremendous non-conference schedule starting out with the University of North Carolina. We have some really good teams we're going to play out of conference. And when we get into conference, I think our league is really a strong, strong league. I think we've had some terrific teams in the league. I think we, even the bottom half of the league is now getting better. So uh, when we play these 18 games, we will be challenged greatly each and every night out. Uh, again, our non-conference starting with North Carolina and going to Puerto Rico and so on after that uh, will, will provide us with a great opportunity to see who we are, what kind of team we're going to be, and uh, how good defensively, how good we're going to take care of the basketball. And we, st we have to make our share of shots in order to compete at the level that we are at. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it personally. I, I wish I could be along for the ride. Why you'd ever invite me, I'll never understand about that. Uh, it's just a matter of time. <laughs> Uh, this is Jake Schwartz for Voice of Reasons coverage of the high school and college sports all across the Trist area, and we have been joined by the Temple head coach, and again, a man who I've had long basketball rows with, Fran Dunphy. For more information, again, on high school and college basketball across the Trist area, visit us, Voice of Reason. I'm Jake Schwartz.